GM, good morning. Welcome to The Milk Road Show, the daily crypto show that's as delightful as finding an extra McDonald's fry at the bottom of the bag. I'm your host, Jay Hamilton, and today we're talking about what the F is going on with ETH. Price action is all over the place. Soul and Bitcoin are outperforming. Is it time to sell your ETH or is it time to buy the FUD? Here to guide us is Kyle Reedhead, co-owner of Milk Road and head of research. Kai, let's start with the obvious question here. Why is ETH underperforming Soul and Bitcoin so poorly right now? Yeah, I mean, so just for context, if you look at Soul ETH chart, I think Soul just hit all time highs versus Ethereum uh, just last week, especially when the big dip happened uh, last Monday. It sort of climbed back and is, is back at kind of par there, but it was dominating for a little bit. Uh, and then Bitcoin has just been steadily beating ETH for the last, like, I don't know, three years or something. Like, when is it since 2022? Um, the ETH BTC ratio has just been grinding down and down and down. So I guess it's almost two years. Um, and so, yeah, Bitcoin has been been outperforming. So is Sol. I think um, it makes sense, to be honest. I think we sort of said this was going to be the scenario here. I think the reason why is let's start with Solana. Solana just was so undervalued versus Ethereum. And it continues to do really well. It continues to um, you know generate new users, new use cases, and just get a lot of uh, developers and sort of mind share in the crypto world. And so it's catching up, right? Sol got so oversold back when FTX collapsed. It was down to like eight or nine dollars. We said at twenty dollars, hey, it's time to buy. Uh, and uh, and we've said it a few times on the way up. And so I think just uh, naturally, we've always said Sol was going to outperform ETH this cycle. And so it's just kind of playing out. Um, now, every once in a while throughout the cycle, you have periods where it really outperforms, and sometimes you have it where it's just a little bit or none at all. We just happened to have a really outperforming week last week uh, when things got oversold. Uh, and so that kind of makes sense for me on Seoul. It's probably still got a lot of room to catch up. It's so undervalued versus everything else um, that I think people are just starting to realize that. And a lot of people and a lot of institutions were underexposed to Solana. So catch up trade continues. I don't see why that would stop anytime soon, so long as Solana continues to do well. Uh, and then Bitcoin, um, this is quite natural, right? It's very normal in cycles that Bitcoin leads the way and it outperforms altcoins. Um, we're not in alt season just yet, uh, and we're not in a full risk on environment just yet either, right? So typically in any of our past cycles in crypto, Bitcoin has led the way until about the halfway point when we reach the, let's call it banana zone is what a lot of people are calling it on Twitter these days. But the time when alts go crazy and the world goes very risk on, we're not there yet. Rates are not down yet. Liquidity is just starting to rise. Um, and we're still kind of uncertain about a lot of things, whether it be recession or what happened with Japan last week. So until we get to that sort of risk on environment, I think Bitcoin continues to to outperform. Now, I thought that Bitcoin would stop outperforming earlier this year in Q2. We're now in Q3. Uh, hasn't happened yet. That's fine. Um, never thought I would nail it on the, on the exact day or exact week or even exact month. So it doesn't matter to me. Um, but I still think ETH will have its moment and alts in general will have its moment versus Bitcoin. Bitcoin dominance is something like 57% right now, which is the highest it's been in a long time. Uh, and I don't think it gets much higher. I could be wrong. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, but I think why ETH is being outperformed right now by these two makes sense. I think that will change. And we can talk about that a lot in this episode and what's going to change that. Um, but I definitely am not shocked at where we're at currently. Although I just would have thought we would have been higher in all assets, to be honest. <laughs> but that's okay. Summer lulls. Okay, so that explains what's going on with Soul and Bitcoin outperforming ETH so far this year. But there's also a lot of FUD around Ethereum, and you tend to see a lot of charts of people talking about problems with Ethereum, problems with low activity, problems with low fees. Can you explain to us are these problems legitimate or are people looking at the wrong statistics or making the wrong conclusions? Um, yeah, good question. Look, first thing I would say is price dictates narrative. And so I would bet right now if Ethereum was crushing it and it was up at 4,000, people would be looking at these charts saying, wow, they're so bullish and like everything is working for Ethereum. But because we don't, we're not in that phase right now in the market and the price has gone down for Ethereum, people are taking charts and finding bearish narratives that they can make around it. Um, and by the way, one thing to add just of why we've had the outperformance of Sol and Bitcoin uh, recently anyway, one, because um, there's a couple of things that I missed here, which is um, 
Ethereum had to recently go through its sort of selling of the Grayscale EPTF, and we'll talk about the ETFs in a little bit. But um, that was a little bit that kind of held it back, just like Bitcoin had when its ETF launched as well with, with the Grayscale Bitcoin ETF. Um, and then the other thing was Jump, uh, a large, large, I guess, market maker and fund in the, in the space was selling a bunch, of its e a bunch of its ETH. And so that's what really um, drove down ETH's price over the, last, uh, over the last week. And so we've gotten through that. Same with Bitcoin had its supply struggles over the past few months with Germany and Mt. Gox. So um, structural supplies, which assets go through at different periods throughout a cycle. Um, so quite normal. And so I think that is the reason why the outperformance of Sol and Bitcoin is so large just over the last like couple of weeks, um, which then creates these narratives that ETH is broken. And it's not working. So I think what's happened now is the narratives are getting negative, very negative about ETH. They've actually been like this way for a little while. I think um, when I look at it, I think that Ethereum is doing exactly what it said it was going to do. It's had its roadmap to scale and it continues to execute on that at a, an amazing rate, in my opinion. And from what I see when I look at the charts, it looks like it's doing a really good job at scaling right now. And people, I think, are mixing up what this means or not seeing the bigger picture of it all. Um, so just to give some context here, Ethereum has struggled in the past with its um, with its scale, right? It got too expensive in the last bull market, so expensive that people couldn't even use it. It was like $20, $30, $40, 50 to do a transaction, even more than if using an NFTs. And that obviously is not the future of finance. We're not going to do that, right? And so... Ethereum has chosen a bit of a different roadmap to scale than something like Solana, which wants to do it all on its L1. What Ethereum has done is created L2s. And we've seen over the last three years this proliferation of L2s, and they're beginning to work out really well. I mean, Base is probably the biggest success story we've had in crypto other than maybe Solana, um, but it's absolutely crushing it. You've got Optimism and Arbitrum doing really, really well. You've got Blast creating some really cool things. You've got IMX or Immutable, which is a, a Web3 gaming L2. All of these... Layer twos are sort of doing their own thing and they appear to be working. They're providing transactions on Ethereum for under one penny, which is always the goal. And they're settling it back to Ethereum. Now, Ethereum, um, the, I guess if when you look at the numbers here, what you see is that Ethereum's numbers haven't moved. Ethereum specifically, its transactions per second have stayed at like 12 seconds or whatever it is, 12 transactions per second. The plan was never really to increase that. We want to keep it very decentralized. And so even on this chart here where you're looking at activity, we can see that Ethereum, the blue line at the bottom of this chart, has stayed the same. It hasn't scaled. But when you add on its L2s, which are bundling up transactions, we see a scaling factor of 25x. So it's actually scaled by 25x since 2023, I guess we're looking at. We're looking at over the last year, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now all of a sudden we're doing TPS of like 300 plus when you look at it, right? If we go to some other metrics where I think a lot of people are missing here is like, let's look at users. This is the one that's most commonly used. And if you look at users, they haven't moved on Ethereum, right? We're sitting around, I think it's around 4 million or something active monthly users. And it's just stayed the same on Ethereum for like since 2021. It hasn't moved. And so people are like, okay, this is bearish Ethereum. But when you actually look at the entire Ethereum ecosystem, remember the goal of Ethereum, it's scaling roadmap was to push users to the L2s and instead transact there so they can get under one cent transactions and they'll settle back on Ethereum. And if you see, we are at just ridiculous all-time highs in terms of active users in the Ethereum ecosystem, the overall ecosystem, right? And we've been doing it month over month over month. We just grow and we grow and we grow. And we're sitting at now over what, this has 30 million active users uh, in the month of June. Uh, July was a bit lower, but whatever, it's fine. Um, we can't go up every single month. But to <laughs> me, that chart looks incredible for the Ethereum ecosystem overall. Remember, we're not Ethereum is not trying to scale Ethereum. It's trying to scale the entire Ethereum ecosystem. And so when we look at what Ethereum is doing and we look at Ethereum, the asset, we need to think of the whole broader picture. And so you have all these charts on Twitter of like Solana versus Ethereum and just showing it's Solana's numbers going up, but Ethereum staying the same. They look at Tron, they look at every chain you want and everything is going up versus Ethereum. But it's because they're missing the bigger picture here, which is that Ethereum is going up too. It's just pushing all of its activity to the layer twos. It's a different roadmap, a different way to scale than every other chain. I think a lot of people are missing that. And the key thing here is that some people say, well, this is parasitic to Ethereum or this is parasitic to ETH, the asset itself. And I think the thing to understand is that all of these layer twos, all of the apps that are on them, what do they use? They use ETH, the asset. Layer twos use ETH, they bridge over the, the ETH and they use ETH there, okay? It is the money that's used in all the apps, okay? Everything that's in smart contracts, whether it's in Aave or on Maker or on whatever, they are all using ETH. They still price NFTs and things like that in ETH. 
they have to pay their transactions. Layer twos literally have to pay Ethereum in ETH. And so people think that layer twos are parasitic and I, I don't necessarily agree. Yes, it's been parasitic to the fees of Ethereum, I guess, if you want to say that. The one big thing to note and to look at recently, and this is another one of the big FUD, is that Ethereum was once deflationary, right? Uh, we can actually show this, this chart as well, Jay, if you want to pop that up on the screen. But for a while there, after we did the merge, Ethereum fees were just going uh, up and up and up. And the, the supply of Ethereum was going down, 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 right? Until we had this upgrade, EIP444, which was back in, I think, March where it made the layer twos really, really cheap. And that's when we started to scale the Ethereum ecosystem. What happened was we we reduced the fees a lot. And so a bunch of these layer twos didn't have to pay as much to Ethereum anymore. And now Ethereum is no longer deflationary. This is probably the real reason that people are so bearish on ETH at the moment. Now what we're doing is we're comparing the supply or the inflation rate, let's call it, of ETH versus Bitcoin. People are still bullish on Bitcoin, right? Even though it's inflating at 1.57% per year, Ethereum is still, if we look at over the last year, it's still negative. It is still deflationary since the merge uh, and since the burn started, or since the merge, sorry. And if you look at Solana, which everyone's super bullish on, right? Because it's got all this activity, it's doing so well. It's like a 7% inflation rate, right? And so why are we getting so caught up in the fact that Ethereum in the last two months or three months is no longer deflationary? It makes no sense. Once again, as we always say in investing, zoom out, right? If we lower the fees on Ethereum, we're allowing for more demand to come in and we just need to wait for that to happen. It's kind of like the broadband moment of the internet. If we think back in like, I don't know, early 2000s, there was all these people using the internet, but we were on dial-up. It was really slow. And so they built all these cables, they built broadband, and they didn't use it. It was Everyone's like, did we waste all of our money? Hell no. It just took a bit of time for more apps and more websites and more things to happen on the internet. And then we used up all that broadband real quick. The same situation is happening with Ethereum right now. We can see the users are going up like crazy. Transactions are going up like crazy once again on the Ethereum ecosystem. As we can see in this chart, we're at all time highs on transactions too. So activity is skyrocketing in the Ethereum ecosystem. It's just the fees are lacking a little bit as a result, but the fees are still way better than Solana and way better than Bitcoin. And so I think there's just this mix up in how we're valuing these assets. Are we really valuing these assets off fees? I'm not sure that we are. And if we are, then it doesn't make sense that Solana is catching up to Ethereum, right? I think we're more valuing these assets off of what they're building, what its potential is, its network effects, its moneyness as an asset, which is the only thing that Bitcoin has value from. And so it's a mix, but people take one chart and go, okay, Ethereum is, is not deflationary anymore. This is super bearish. It's all over. And I think people just need to zoom out and go, look, this was the plan all along. It's working. Just give it time. And like, <laughs> let's see what happens here but we don't need to trip out after like two, three months of fees going the opposite way. Okay, so we've got users and transactions, people making the mistake of just looking at Ethereum, not looking at the entire ecosystem. Very yeah. easy mistake to make. Make sure your charts are accurate. Uh, when you look at the price action, what are the things that are in your mind holding the price down right now, other than obviously sentiment, which you mentioned as well. What are the other factors that you're taking into consideration? Yeah. So, I mean, mentioned sentiment, I mentioned already that jump was selling. And then we also had the grayscale ETF, right? Uh, and so we basically had to unwind that trade for a while. Still happening today, has not gone anywhere yet. However, interestingly, as we record today, yesterday, so on Monday, August uh, 12th, was the first day that we've ever had zero outflow from the grayscale ETH ETF. Now it's probably not done. There's still more to go, I'm sure. We're only about 25% of the way uh, of, of, basically what's happened is with the Bitcoin grayscale ETF, 50% of the assets uh, moved out of grayscale and then it's sort of leveled out. We're currently 25% of the way there. Uh, and so we've still got more to go probably on this grayscale ETH ETF uh, in terms of outflows. And then once that's done, there really doesn't seem to be much else that's holding back Ethereum other than the narrative, right? The narrative of, of people thinking that there's no growth when there is the narrative of this fees, which I think is just going to take some time to play out. So for me, when I look at this, I think everything is actually all good with Ethereum and the activity, the transactions, the ecosystem itself looks very bullish. We're sort of finally about to be through our sort of supply overhang that we've talked about, similar to what happened with Bitcoin. And then we have this ETF. And when I think about this ETH ETF and how big of a deal this is, is if TradFi wants to get exposure to crypto, they have two options, at least in the US. You can buy your Bitcoin ETF, you can buy your ETH ETF. 
I guess you could also buy Coinbase, okay? But if they want real exposure to the underlying assets, Bitcoin, they've already had the opportunity to do that. Well, some, right? We still need to get more on board. We haven't opened this up to the pension funds, et cetera. So they're still to come and they're going to buy Bitcoin. But the way that TradFi works is they never just buy one asset. They diversify. And so they'll take X percent of their portfolio, of their risk asset portfolio will go into Bitcoin and probably half that percent or whatever it is, a quarter of it, whatever it is, will go into ETH right? For a few reasons. One, just because it's the two options and they want to diversify. The other reason is TradFi understands tech platforms. Bitcoin is digital gold. Okay. Not a lot of TradFi invests in gold, to be completely honest, but they, they get it. They've wrapped their head around it. They understand it's a technology play on the new gold. But Ethereum is very easy to wrap their heads around for a lot of TradFi people, which is it's a new app store, but a decentralized one, right? It's the next Apple, let's call it, but a whole different thing. And so one, they can understand it better. And so I think we'll start to see people buying as a result of that. We've already seen pretty good flows from Ethereum. It's not amazing, but it's been pretty good based off what we thought was going to happen against, against Bitcoin. Obviously, it's been a very tough time the last few weeks since it's launched with the Japan trade unwinding and all that. Um, but I think the other thing is if TradFi wants exposure to just crypto in general, what's their option? It's not Bitcoin because nothing's being built over there. But it is Ethereum because everything is being built there. If they want exposure to L2s, they just buy Ethereum right now. There isn't an optimism or a base ETF. There isn't a maker ETF or an Aave ETF if they want uh, access to DeFi, right? They don't have access to Solana yet, unfortunately. Now, one day I'm sure that'll come. But if they want exposure to just crypto, the asset class, they're going to buy ETH for that. And I think that's what this ETH ETF really represents. And so I think we're going to see a lot of inflows once markets turn. Right. You got to remember that we're still in this phase of like the Japan trade unwinding. We're still in this phase of are we in recession, et cetera, et cetera. And so, yes, all assets are doing bad right now. And ETH did a little bit worse than the rest because Jump also sold. And we also had that grayscale outflows. And so it makes sense what's happening right now. And I think once we start to go more risk on, there's just there's no other option for TradFi right now but to buy ETH if they want exposure to crypto. And we're pretty sure if that we go risk on, crypto is going to do really well. It always does. And so there's an obvious setup here that to me makes complete sense, but I think just a lot of people are missing. Um, and I mean, I kind of get why we've had this delay in terms of ETH and it's it's underperformance. And so like, I get it. But I think if we look at the bigger picture, it's still growing. The, the network effects are still expanding. There's so many developers on Ethereum. Everything that they've said they were going to do just continues to happen, uh, including getting an ETH ETF. And so I just, I don't know why people can be bearish right now. Um, it just kind of blows my mind. If we were to flip the script, what would be the arguments on the bear side for Ethereum that you would agree with that people hold? Yeah, for sure. It's a great question. Um, so a few things. I mean, one, maybe people don't care about crypto and crypto is not going to be a thing and things aren't going to move on chain. And if that's the case, then obviously people aren't going to buy ETH. Uh, I find that one very like unlikely at this point. Uh, although I guess, obviously, if Trump doesn't win the election, we still don't know Kamala Harris's opinion on crypto or what they're going to do. Uh, and so that could hold things back. But again, that's just one country. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But that could be a thing that holds it back without a doubt and probably already is right now. Um, I guess the big thing is that Bitcoin doesn't really have competition in terms of something fighting for money, other than I guess Ethereum would be its competition because it's a bit of both a smart contract platform, but also trying to be money. Um Whereas Ethereum has tons of competition, right? We've already talked about Solana, which seems undervalued versus ETH. It's eating some of the market share of Ethereum. Uh, and so like, there is a lot of competition with Solana. There could be Tron, there could be Ton, there could be, uh, I mean, all the new ones like Aptos and Sui, et cetera. So like, there is a lot of competition. Now, what you need to look for is like, where are the developers? Where are the apps being built, et cetera? Ethereum still holds a large share of that. And so that competition is light at the moment, but that could change. Um, what would change that? I don't know. Obviously, Telegram going on Ton is a big thing. If some of the other big tech companies decide to go on Solana or Aptos or Sui or whatever, that might change things a little bit. Um, but again, we've got things like BlackRock, et cetera, that are already building over on ETH, same with Coinbase. And so it's tough to think that everything's just going to change real quick. Uh, but I think it definitely could. You never really know. Um, there's also, I guess, just TradFi doesn't get it. Maybe they don't get Ethereum. Maybe they don't get that it's a tech platform. Um, but I mean, you got to just remember like BlackRock and Fidelity and all these companies that have ETFs, their job is to go and make sure these people get it. They don't, they can't let their ETFs not succeed. They have to find a way to make it work. And so you've got an army of 
TradFi uh, advisors that are going to go out there and teach everyone in the world why Bitcoin is good, why ETH is good. And so um, I find some of these hard to believe, but they definitely can come true. Um, I guess the last one is maybe the fees never come back. Maybe L2s really are parasitic and they do take all the fees away from ETH. Um, we'll see. Again, this is something, it's an unknown. It is my opinion that fees will continue to come back. I think we just need demand. It feels again like the broadband moment of the internet. Um, and so it feels short-sighted to go that way, but it is a, a valuable and, and definitely could be right. We don't know yet. We need to let time play out. Um, so those are some of the things that I look at and I, I kind of wonder, um, but I take the positive side to almost all of those. I want to know everybody listening in, how are you feeling about ETH right now? Are you bullish? Are you bearish after listening to this episode or just in general, what's your sentiment? Have you sold it for soul? Have you sold it for BTC or maybe you're in something else? Would you like us to us to talk more about the L2s? Are you interested in that? Look, the show is always for you guys and we want to know what you want us to focus on. Kai, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah, in terms of should you swap your ETH into Sol or your ETH into Bitcoin? Um, look, the way that our portfolio is set up, we've luckily had exposure to Solana since early 2023. So we haven't needed to do any of that. Um, our portfolio has done really, really well in terms of Solana. Uh, at least mine has. And uh, and now that's become a massive, massive holding of ours. Um, not even because we put you know 50% of our holdings into it back in 2023, but because it's grown so much. So it's now become 50% at least, at least in my uh, in my holdings. And so for me, it doesn't make sense to move any ETH into Soul. If you don't hold any Soul, probably should hold some. I mean, we've been bullish on that for forever and we keep talking about that. I still think it has a lot of long ways to go. Um, but I think we are, at least I think we're kind of at a bottom here with ETH or close to it. Uh, again, waiting for that risk on moment where all assets are going to rise. And when that happens, I think ETH outperforms Bitcoin. I still think Solana outperforms ETH. Um, but would you just put everything into Solana at this point? Like, absolutely not. I think you need to diversify. And I think the best thing you can do to, to diversify is, one, if you want to hold Bitcoin, hold that. And then two, what are the two ecosystems that are dominating crypto right now? It's Ethereum ecosystem and Solana. And so it makes sense for you to hold both. And you got to remember that narratives will, will pick up at certain times. Solana has picked up a lot of mind share right now in the space. And so it's outperforming. At some point, that's going to switch. It almost always does. And so Ethereum will have its moment too. Just because things are getting very bearish right now and there's a lot of FUD, that's not the time to be selling. If we looked at these charts and the Ethereum system was not growing every single month, month over month in terms of users, in terms of transactions, in terms of the way that it's scaling, then yes, I would say get the hell out if it didn't get an ETF. I'd be saying, let's go. Like Things have changed. We need to get out. I'm not uh, biased to ETH because I hold some. I'm not obsessed with ETH. I'm not an ETH maxi. I just look at the numbers and I look at the fundamentals and there's no reason to be bearish on ETH and be selling it for everything else. Again, the numbers all look good in the Ethereum ecosystem. So we just got to give it time to play out. But I think the numbers look good on both Solana and ETH. And so I don't think you should be one or the other. I think you should be buying both. But what I like to do is buy when things are undervalued or are being sold off. Ethereum has gotten beat up. And so if I have extra cash, I'm definitely putting a larger percentage of that into Ethereum right now. I'm not selling Ethereum to Solana. That makes no sense. For context, I'm playing this for the whole cycle. I think we have another 12 to 16 months left. And so my bet is I'll be selling then, not now. If I'm a trader, maybe you want to move things around. I don't know, but that's not what I do. I'm looking to play for the entire cycle where I think both Ethereum and Solana are going to do really well over the next 12 to 16 months. You know who else is playing for the long-term, Kai? The Milkman. And if you guys want to help us grow, make sure you subscribe to the show because this news, what we're talking about today, it's going to be different a week from now. It's going to be different two weeks from now. And you want to make sure you stay up to date on the markets and you are getting our show every day. So subscribe. Also, you can help the show grow. You can help out the milkman. Hit the like button. Give us a comment. Let us know what you want us to talk more about. Remember, none of this is financial advice. Investing in crypto is risky and you should only invest what you can afford to lose. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Have a wicked awesome day.